Hello and welcome to Wheels Boy. For today's video, we're going to be bringing you a look at a car and a brand that have kind of flown under the radar, or should I say, the LiDAR. Pause for laughter. Okay, keep going. Um, this is the Arc Fox Alpha S, an electric sedan about the same size as a Tesla Model S that has a pretty impressive spec sheet. Today, we're gonna find out if the reality matches the numbers. With hands-on test drives and reviews of exciting Chinese market vehicles, Wheelsboy is the number one source for China Auto Insights. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. One reason ArcFox doesn't get much attention is because its sales lag well behind rivals like Xpeng. The company sold about 6,700 Alpha S sedans in the first half of 2022. Xpeng sells that many P7 sedans in a month. Interest in the company peaked back in 2021 when it released an eye-catching but controversial video exhibiting the car's Huawei Inside or HI self-driving technology. That tech was supposed to debut at the end of 2021, but was delayed a full year. Today's test drive event that we're participating in is mainly focused on experiencing this car's uh, Huawei inside LiDAR powered uh, driver assistance system, particularly inside of the Shanghai city limits. But I did want to take a moment to talk a little bit about the design. Now, this thing has a generically handsome look, if you ask me. But where it gets interesting is when you come around to the side of the car and you see the proportions. This thing has the look of one of those kind of slightly stretched upwards sedans. It sits a little bit higher than a regular sedan, almost getting into crossover levels of height. You really only notice it, honestly, when you open the door and step out of the car. Overall, however, I do think it's pretty good looking, especially in this very interesting matte paint job. This is original. This is not a wrap. All of the cars that we're uh, going to be seeing today are uh, in this original color. Um, you have some 20-inch wheels wearing Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. These are the SUV version because this is an EV. It's very, very heavy. Uh, and then finally, we come around to the rear where you have a swooping full LED rear taillight and probably one of the best parts, lift back rear area. So tons and tons of space back here for storage. In all honesty, the interior of this car didn't come across as a very special to me when I looked at it in photos, but sitting inside, there's something that strikes me. And that's the fact that it feels absolutely huge in here. The space is incredible. A big part of that is this two-tiered center console design. Up here you have a wireless charging pad and some physical buttons, including a dial that's used to control your center screen, which is of course a touch screen as well, and then Eco Comfort Sport driving modes. This whole setup reminds me a bit of BMW, not necessarily in its particular looks, but in the features that it has. Of course, the second tier is down here where you have a storage area with your USB ports, your cup holders, and then even more storage right here. The result of this open design is that the interior simply feels gigantic. Putting aside my general distaste for this kind of gray plus silver plus black interior, I find it very boring, I would say that the actual styling in here is, is quite nice. The materials, for example, are, well, What's interesting about this car is that it starts at 32,000 US dollars for a single front mounted motor version with a smaller battery pack. It goes all the way up to 62,000 US dollars for this uh, performance version with the Huawei inside self driving technology. And at 32,000, these materials honestly would be not just acceptable, but, but quite good. At 62,000, I don't know, it doesn't feel quite up to what I would expect. A lot of hard plastic surfaces. Um, here we have a 22 inch center screen, which uses the Harmony operating system from Huawei and the primordial chaos, uh, chaos software platform that we actually experienced already in the Beijing Rubik's Cube. ArcFox, you should know, is a sub-brand of BAIC. Um, then we have a 10.25 inch uh, instrument cluster screen here and the piece de resistance, in my opinion, this performance version has performance written here on the seat. It's a little bit much for me, but I don't know, maybe you like it. 
Sitting in the back seat, we have a very decent amount of space, especially over the head, because the roof is actually scalloped. It's almost like a little gurney bubble, except you can't see it on the outside of the car. Legroom wise, we have a wheelbase of 2.915 meters, which is a little bit less than the 2.96 of the Model S, despite the fact that these cars are the exact same length. Here in the center console, you have a uh, touch panel, which has got your air conditioning mode adjust, as well as a mute button and volume. If we pop this panel down here, two USB ports for rear passengers, uh, original type A. And then, because I always do this and I can't forget, your fold down center armrest with cup holders and small storage area. The Alpha S joins the Xpeng P5 and its city NGP as the only Chinese cars offering navigation on autopilot in urban environments. Both systems are currently limited to specific cities, with the Xpeng system only available in Guangzhou and the ArcFox system only available in Shenzhen and Shanghai. It should also be noted that there are two different trims for the Alpha S with Huawei Inside Tech, and while both have the same hardware, their software and capabilities differ quite a bit. The cheaper trim costs around 57,000 US dollars and only has NOA capabilities on the highway, while the more expensive version, costing around 62,000 US dollars, is capable of using NOA in city environments. ArcFox says owners who choose the cheaper version can upgrade their car later via OTA, but specific prices have not been announced. We are now about to start the main show, which is going to be a combination uh, test drive of the car itself and an experience of the HI, not high, I have been corrected, is the HI Huawei Inside NCA or Navigation Cruise Assist System, which is basically going to be the equivalent of a navigation on autopilot within the city itself. Really quickly, I want to tell you about the uh, hardware. There's a 30 or 34 sensors and cameras throughout the car, including those three LiDAR on the front that include a 300 degree field of view. So once we get on the road, I'm going to hit this thing twice, just like every other system, basically. And it's going to allow me to activate the NCA. But first, we need to get out of this parking lot. In addition to all those sensors and cameras, the Alpha S uses high-definition maps to guide its driver assistance. In terms of computing power, the HI system has 400 tops, while the much cheaper Xpeng P5 has 30 tops. The Xpeng G9, which has a similar price to the Alpha S, has 508 tops. So we are now on the road, and it has now given me the indication that I can turn on NCA Navigation Cruise Assist, which it is now activated. In addition to displaying the status of stoplights, including countdowns, the system will also detect and display whether the brake lights of cars in front have been activated. So this system obviously as part of NCA has uh, automatic lane changes, uh, which we've been making pretty consistently here. I'm actually going to adjust our speed up a bit in order to keep up with traffic. Here's an interesting situation. So. There's some construction that it's detected ahead, which is blocking the lane. So now we're going to see how smoothly it can make this transition, this, this lane change to the right when there's consistent traffic coming from behind. How, how aggressive will it be? So it's kind of nosing in in a natural way. <laughs> that was that was aggressive <laughs> that was very aggressive i'm not entirely sure if the if the, what the system was planning there uh I, I i kind of intervened because frankly i was just nervous that it was going to run straight into the side uh of that buick gl8 maybe it's because i'm not used to having a system that's uh that aggressive and how it enters a lane um, more aggressive than I would be personally as a driver, but yeah, that was a bit disconcerting. The NCA system smoothly navigated through some complex road conditions during our test drive, but it did require me to intervene at a few points. In addition to the lane change incident with the Buick GL8, I also had to turn off the system when the car found itself crammed between a parked car and oncoming traffic on a very narrow road. 
Overall, I found it to be comparable to Xpeng's City and GP, with both requiring you to be vigilant at all times. With that out of the way, it was time to assess how the car felt to drive for real. So as you can see from my hand positioning, I am now driving the car myself as opposed to being driven by the NCA, which is how I prefer to do it anyways. So let's talk a little bit about the driving experience, starting with the numbers. This is, and I feel like I've said this a lot lately, the fastest car we've ever reviewed. Zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.5 seconds, according to ArcFox. That's accomplished using the dual motor powertrain in this performance car, which has 473 kilowatts and 655 newton meters of torque. Uh, I'm trying to find an opportunity to actually experience that. Let's see if we can't do it, maybe getting away from this red light. Okay, let's see what zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.5 seconds feels. <laughs> All right, if that, if that tells you anything, uh, acceleration is, is, is very, very aggressive. I would say it, it feels on par with the Neo ET7, which was previously the hardest launching car that I had ever, uh, Chinese car that I had ever experienced. So yeah, it feels as fast as they say it does. The HI package is only available on the performance version of the Alpha S, but unlike standard performance cars, which use a 94 kilowatt hour battery pack, HI cars use a 74.5 kilowatt hour pack, dropping range from 603 kilometers to 500 kilometers. Lower spec cars have a single front mounted motor and a range of 525 to 708 kilometers, depending on whether you choose the 67 kilowatt hour pack or the 94 kilowatt hour pack. Keep in mind, all those ranges are NEDC rather than China's more optimistic CLTC standard. So it's fast, but based on the numbers, we knew that was going to be the case. How does it actually drive? I have it in sport mode right now. Um, I would say well, it drives like it looks in all honesty, which is kind of a very low crossover or a very high sedan. You feel pretty high off the ground. You've got good visibility all around. The responses from the car itself, the steering very heavy, but not particularly communicative. The inputs from the accelerator to the brake are very, very soft. They're not difficult to modulate, but they're not particularly, mm, how should I say, sporty feeling, even in sport mode. In terms of ride and handling, again, it's hard to get much of an impression when you're just driving on city streets at a pretty casual pace, but I would say that comfort is quite good. This thing has McPherson strut front multi-link rear. McPherson is a surprising choice for this price point. We're talking about a 62,000 US dollar car when you outfit it like this, and that doesn't feel uh, particularly appropriate for that price. Even for 32,000 for the very base version, I would say it should probably have a double wishbone, which most of its competitors do have. Still, when it comes to just daily driving like this, this is a pretty comfortable vehicle. Um, lots of movement from the body, um, which again, isn't particularly surprising based on the ride height. But uh, yeah, I would say this thing is tuned very, very softly and very much towards comfort, not necessarily sporty driving dynamics. So as I wrap up the entire test drive event here today, short but sweet, I would say that my first experience with NCA, again, uh, pretty impressive, similar to Xpeng's system. Definitely with both systems, it's a case that you need to be paying attention to the car at all times. They are definitely not perfect systems. This is true for Tesla's FSD, uh, the FSD Streets beta. Uh, it's true for uh, City NGP, and it's absolutely true for this car. They are not self-driving systems. They're not self-driving. You are driving the car and watching the car at all times, basically. And if you don't, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble very quickly. So please keep that in mind. Um, in terms of the driving experience, uh, I would say this is a very comfortable, very spacious, um, very well-equipped car. Again, I have some problems with the price point that they're playing in. Once you get to a very high spec version of this car, you are talking about uh, a price point that's right there with the Neo ET7. And if you had to t ask me, would I take an ET7 or this? I would probably have to go with the ET7. I'd like the way it looks more and I like the way it drives a little bit better, but still uh, an interesting opportunity to check out ArcFox and to see, you know, 
what this brand is all about. So thank you so much for watching today's uh, short but uh, somewhat meandering video. Um, really appreciate that. Be sure to check us out uh, on our Instagram, Facebook, website, all of that. Those links are in the description below. Uh, now I'm going to see how much trouble I can get into with this 3.5 second 0 to 100 kilometer per hour time. Bye bye.